to play with the same things. And even though he was so verbal, um, I knew something was wrong, and I kept researching and researching and asking for help and mm-hmm. trying to get some information. And because he was so highly intelligent, right. people kind of pushed it aside and didn't think anything was really wrong. We even took him to a psychiatrist when he was five Mm -hmm. who did all these tests and asked us questions, and he said, typical normal boy. Come on. Really? It was wrong. And you knew there was something. I knew something was wrong. I'm a credentialed teacher, you know, and I've had some background in special ed, Mm -hmm. and something I just knew wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking maybe he was gifted, and I kept resourcing gifted things, and I would Mm -hmm. go to his teacher and say, you know, look, he's doing this and this and this. Maybe he's bored because he's so Mm -hmm. smart. Um, but as I say today, this side is gifted and this side's autistic. Mm. Um, basically what happened is a friend of mine showed me an article that she read in a magazine and she said, Barry, you have to read this. This is your right. son. And I knew, I knew, I said, son. this is what's wrong. Yeah. There's a name for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I called a meeting at the school and they all shook their heads <laughs> and they said, yeah, this is we've it. been talking behind your back. We kind of thought, yeah, he's on the this autism right. spectrum. And then wow. the help just flowed. Um, I called autism societies and moms mm. and groups and all mm-hmm. sorts of people mm-hmm. um, to get information about this weird thing called autism. Because from my education, the kids with autism sat and rocked. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Didn't talk. Withdrew or we knew completely. from Rain Man. Yeah. That's what we've always seen. A yeah. savant yeah. who mm-hmm. just is brilliant, mm-hmm. but just really doesn't fit yeah, in. Yeah, totally mm-hmm. out of it. Yeah, but my mm-hmm. son sort of fit in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and... Um, he didn't do a lot of the things. You know, on the dsm 4 it's a big list of right. steps, and you have to have, like, two or three of this and two or three of this. It's a, mm-hmm. kind of like a mental diagnosis right. mm-hmm. book. And, you know, you have to see what fits, and some things fit and some things didn't. Mm-hmm. And his diet, he was so restricted and only mm. eating peanut butter and jelly and macaroni and cheese and right. cheese and crackers. And just would not eat other things. Wouldn't touch anything else. Didn't I want see. fruits, didn't want vegetables, and, and a lot of other foods didn't want to eat either. Was it, was it a bit of a relief to at least have a name for Absolutely. this disorder? Absolutely. It, it was. His father cried hysterically when we finally got the diagnosis. Really? And um, How about you? I cried, but my, my tears were different. He was sad, and you hear that from fathers, yeah. you know, because this is my little boy who right. I thought we'd play go, you know, ball exactly. with right, and do different right. things, kind of like a dream broken. For me, it was a huge relief because hmm. I had a name, yeah. and I knew that we could move forward now with this name. Now we can do something. Yeah, and I cry for joy because of where we were and where we are today. Yeah, you took a different yeah. course. You know, most yes. kids diagnosed, most families diagnosed with an autism issue. Mm-hmm. They get into the drug company business, you know, and, and but you you did something different. In fact, something that my colleagues are still taught is mm-hmm. alternative or quackery Absolutely. or unproven. Mm-hmm. Or so mm-hmm. how'd you get into that? Absolutely, that um, I read an article in Parents Magazine. <laughs> magazine. Me and my magazines. I write for magazines now. Oh, do too. you? <laughs> the internet is pretty full of them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You know, and this was you know uh, almost seven years ago, mm-hmm. so or over seven years ago, so there wasn't as much on the internet, but today there is so much mm-hmm. more. So did you and just was, go at it and change the diet, or did you, was it a slow process? Well, I basically found a message board after I read this article mm-hmm. in Parents Magazine um, about a woman who did this diet with her son, and then I went and I found this website, and I started reading, and a lot of it was about drugs, and I said, I will not drug my child. Yeah. There's got to be another way, right. and I've always believed you are what you eat. My mom's a retired dietitian, so okay. I grew up right. eating healthy and All knowing right. about the importance of food. Mm-hmm. And I learned more about this and started talking to some professionals. And they said, you know, you've got to take it all away. He'll starve. That's all my son eats. What do you mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. He lives on gluten. He mm-hmm. lives on casein. Mm-hmm. And they said, he's addicted. It's addicted. causing a reaction that the morphine, it's a leaky gut. It also affects your bowel system, your right. gut. Right. And it leaks into the blood system, the bloodstream, mm-hmm. and goes up and causes this opiate reaction, like morphine. Who knew? No. No. No, your kid's eating pizza, he's eating cheeses and, and, and uh, peanut butter. How'd you get to think that change? he's addicted is ridiculous. I mean, yeah. you know, most, most yeah. families, even when they're presented with this information, just yeah. throw up their hands and say, I can't do it. I'm yeah. And, and not, just, not just with the autism issue, with every issue. How did you get this to yeah. happen? In fact, I, I want that story route. in just a moment yeah. because we, we're going to have to take a break right now. But let's come back to John's question Absolutely. right after the break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. 
We're talking with Dr. John McDougall and Barry Silberberg about autism. So your son was diagnosed at the age of six and a half. Yes. You finally realize what's going on with him. You want to change his diet, and you've got a struggle ahead. And, and John was asking, how did this happen? Right. Okay. Was he resistant to it? Well, let me go back a little bit. We were um, told that he was so disruptive in the classroom, his behavior was just atrocious. Mm. Um, he couldn't sit still. He screamed. He yelled. He threw things. He was violent. Mm. He was just nasty to be around. He would choke children for no reason. And he was um, six years old? He was six. Wow. And they said he can't stay at the school anymore. Oh, no. And they even had a special ed program at that school. But they said he was too severe that he couldn't even be in that program. For the program. So we went and looked at several schools in our district. And one of the schools was for behavioral um, children who are autistic. And we walked in and they were stimming, which is flapping your hands, which often is very... Uh, stimulating, that's why it's called stimming, that many of the autistic children do, screaming, yelling, majority of them were nonverbal. Mm -hmm. And we saw one table and they were giving them little prompts to try and give them rewards. What were they giving them? Dye-filled, gluten-free cereal. Hmm. Later I would gasp at seeing this behavior because mm -hmm. dyes and preservatives are just as horrendous to our children, all children. Is that right? Anyways, so what happened is they said he can't, st and we said no. You know, we're mm -hmm. like, there's no way. My husband and I are like, mm -hmm. there's no way we're going yeah. to have my child in this class. He's too verbal. And I knew nothing about the diet at that point. So then they said, let's look at a severely emotionally disturbed classroom at another school. We went there. We said, it's better, but my son is not emotionally disturbed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, he's autistic. There's something wrong here. And I, in the back of my mind, remember reading that article, and I said... I have no choice. Got to try the diet. Yeah. I've got to do the diet. And I started doing as much research as I can. Mm -hmm. And um, we first did milk because he drank gallons and gallons and gallons of milk. He needed that high. So you removed right. milk from his diet. I removed milk. Okay. And we started with, um, I believe we did soy milk. And it's actually recommended now that many of the children on the spectrum do not do well with soy. Oh, really? Um, a lot of the chemical components are very similar to casein. Mm -hmm. um, I have tested my son with soy, and he's perfectly fine. Okay. We've added it. We've taken it away, mm -hmm. but we'll get to that no later. Yeah. And we've reintroduced it with no problems, but many, many kids do have problems with soy. But anyways, so we started first. with soy milk, and he really didn't like it at first. And I gave him vanilla or white, mm -hmm. and then someone said, try chocolate. So mm -hmm. I tried chocolate. He still wasn't too thrilled with it. And then someone tried it, said, try this dairy-free. It's Vance's dairy-free, and it's mm -hmm. made with potatoes. It's a powder. Mm. Loved it. Oh, ah, really? Good. Very good. It's a great yeah, stuff. Good. It's loaded with vitamins and minerals. It's a good. really good product. Good. So, so it what worked. Next? It worked. And then cheese. You know, he was yeah. eating massive quantities of cheese. So we stopped, and we, we tried some soy cheeses, and... By themselves, they weren't good, but I would mix them up with macaroni, and then it would taste fine, and okay. he would do that.